Hi, my name's Simon from TradeRoomPlus.com and today we're going to be looking at the asset of the day, which are global indices. So we'll start off by having a look at the uh, FTSE 100. Um, just interested to see where we lie with the sort of FIB retracement again. Um, pull it back from this swing, I guess. A couple of swings you can pull it from either this one or, or just one a little bit lower, but I prefer the big obvious one on this daily time frame. We're still sort of chopping around this 50% recovery um, on the FTSE. The FTSE is the least sort of uh, strong index that hasn't recovered as much as the others as well. Say week in, week out, um, we've just gone into a bit of a sideways trading range, really. I mean, we, we we have been overall a trending market quite slow. I mean, you're seeing, generally speaking, higher highs and higher lows that are indicative of a trending market. And you can see how that's just been broken um, to the downside when we saw a bit of selling off, probably on the back of the... Um, some of the Federal Reserve news that we have that caused the US to dramatically sell off. And we've really just gone sideways and choppy at the moment. Um, people, the optimism that we've had that have driven us up a, a little bit higher has disappeared um, slightly. So we'll just zoom in and have a quick look at the uh, market as it looks. And we'll have a look for some levels that we could potentially trade. I mean, looking down, let's get my right indicator. I mean, looking down at. Uh, this level down here to buy up from 936 would certainly be interesting i mean it's some distance away to be fair it's a couple of big big sell-off levels away if we zoom in a little bit closer on the daily time frame i think possibly just buying up from uh just looking at here um going down to this uh, 138 i think would be interesting which was the uh, sort of low of the week back from the 18th of june we can see today's candle is quite bearish um, and if the US, once it opens in, in sort of three hours' time, pulls us further down, I'd be interested in a double bottom from down here on the FTSE. Now, when you do have sideways markets, you're generally looking to fade back into them. You know, you've got trend strategies, you've got sideways strategies as two sort of macro uh, approaches, if you like. So we're just looking for this type of thing here where the market's bouncing up and down, up and down, up and down, uh, that type of thing as well. So sort of buying and selling the extreme. So if the market pulls back um, to this level down here, I'm looking for it to come down to 6138, then be interested in buying up. I think you have to get on some shorter term time frames to find any other opportunities, maybe some intraday opportunities. It does look like it's finding a bit of support here, but it could easily push back down into that level a little bit later. It's only sort of uh, 20, 30 points away. Um, so, yeah, we will uh, we'll see what happens if we do continue to uh, sell off. But like I say, sideways market, so on FTSE, certainly. So we're interested in selling back into the range. Moving on to the DAX, the German stock market. We'll have a... Uh, pull the usual fib from the all-time highs that we saw just before we started the coronavirus down to these all-time lows now the dax has recovered quite strongly uh in in a lot of respects and you can see how uh, strong it has been uh looking at uh you know some of these sell-offs and some of these recoveries here um we haven't been all the way up to sort of the 80 percent recovery if you like not nearly just below 78 percent levels about 75 percent recovery of the uh, of the down move so the dax has been relatively stronger i mean today again is another bearish day i mean we overall again we're in a sort of sideways range aren't we if we look if we take a sort of box of look at the extremes of the price action you could probably make that a little bit tighter to be fair there's just this atypical candle poking up but you can see we're just in this sort of box from all the way down here at 12 100 all the way up to sort of 12 400 maybe a fraction higher 12 450 um, so again, it's about probably selling the extremes of the ranges, and particularly as stock markets like to go up more than they go down. You know, the more the more, you know, if you pull back, the more you almost inevitably, or at least history has shown, going to get a nice rally up. Of course, it's just a case of finding the appropriate reversal point and picking the bottom. We want to make sure we don't do that. But if the market comes down, certainly towards this level down here, this twelve one hundred. Now that is only it's only one hundred and sixty points away. I appreciate we have sold off quite dramatically. Uh, so far today but you know again if we see a bearish u.s session or continuation of a bit up and leading into the u.s session then we might see the market come down hold at this 12 100 then we're looking for a buy very similar to the FTSE really like i say on these daily time frames it's just looking at these big levels if you get onto an hourly or even shorter then then potentially there'll be there'll be quite a lot more trades but again you know we've got to work on the time frames that's appropriate for for you watching this and um and that that's the daily is the best one um, so yeah, definitely an interesting buying there. I mean, I think if we come in, I know it's very wicky up here. I mean, it's saying you know a lot most of the time the but there's no more bulls at this level. You know, the sellers are coming in, running out of bullishness. We're nearly exclusively wick above twelve four hundred. You know, here, 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 here. That all tells me there's not not much sellers here. But certainly, if we carry on putting, if we move up and then put pressure on the on the sort of bodies of these candles, 
Uh, probably this 12 400 i might look for a triangle wedge and a break long because eventually i mean if this does a higher low as well you'd be looking at a triangle wedge um so it'd be interesting to see the market come up and then would look for a break long but that's probably you know buying on weakness or buying on strength the dax isn't as clear cut to sell when it gets to the highs it's clear cut when it gets to the lows but with all these wicks at different levels it's a bit trickier to pick a top to sell at so i'm probably more bullish on the dax waiting for it to break back up but we'll uh, have to wait and see what happens and then moving on to the uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, again, it was it was pretty bullish, wasn't it? A little bit stronger in the DAX. You can see when we peaked up here, it was sort of the early June or eighth and ninth of June. Um, you can see how we broke above this this previous resistance level at two seven one zero. But again, we've gone back into a bit of a sideways trading range, haven't we? And um, we've had that, you know, dramatic. I mean, you can pull Fibonacci's on on shorter term moves as well if you want a four hourly or maybe an hourly time frame this is probably more appropriate but you can pull Fibonacci here as well and just have a look at if there's any obvious confluence uh, uh, of levels and there's a little bit of activity on the 61.8 but it's not great to be fair I wouldn't particularly use this as a as a, as a massive guide sometimes you can force Fibonacci and just see levels that aren't there you want it to be jump out at you pretty clearly that it's working but we're just sort of chopping around in cyber's price action but again the opportunity to buy weakness, I think, is, is interesting. Um, seeing the market come down to potentially down to uh, um, this level on the 22nd of June for a long, certainly, I'd be interested in that. Um, looking for the market to do that, that'd be ideal for me. Um, equally, of course, we've got this big level down here, which we rejected based on the uh, the lows of the 15th of June. That's some distance away, but I mean, the Dow doesn't like it's rolling over here. Um, you know, if you, if we draw a sort of I'm not a big fan of horizontal vertical trend lines, but this one works reasonably nicely, to be fair. So it does look like we've got a, uh, sorry, an angled trend line, should I say, I like horizontal support and resistance. Um, but it does look like we're wedging down here. So, I mean, I think if, if initial bounce off this level, then maybe we could look for a potential break short if it bounce, gives us a setup and you'd probably just pin your stop above this trend line and maybe behind some moving averages or anything else that you may consider technically valid. So that does look like we're starting to come down here for a... Uh, a triangular wedge um, that would be interesting seeing and certainly of course this would be a big major buy zone look at that wick which just saying you know how quickly the bulls came back into the market and found value down there it's, it's highly likely they'll do so again not guaranteed of course but but i would say highly likely in my judgment looking at that candle question is whether it'll actually come and give you an entry right at the low that's probably less likely with such a wick but yeah certainly at the moment i mean maybe if you are a trend line trader you'd look for a break of this trend line look for it to test it and then break above it but um you know that would be something that's not really something that i do i think it's trickier to sell to the upside again we've got lots of wicks and we've got lots of different levels that aren't really clear and distinctive short term time frame there might be a, a long opportunity but i certainly think buying from down here at this uh, 25 600 it would be an idea then if it starts pushing back down then we'll look for a break short and see if we can open up this large gap here could have a good risk reward on that so they're the levels i'm seeing uh, throughout the market so we'll uh, we'll wait and see what happens and where we are next week so thank you for joining me. I hope you'll join me next week for the assets of the day, which are global indices.